you live in this area at all, as we tell you whenever we cover a pursuit, just stay inside. Keep it on Fox 11 here. Don't come out. Uh, don't wave or gesture at any of these individuals because they're clearly not in a good state of mind running from police at this time. They're dealing with some serious issues, could be under the influence. Right. So just try to stay safe inside your home and don't try to be a hero or anybody to agitate the situation even that much more. And they might not know much about the driver. Again, when we've got a stolen vehicle, uh, there's a chance that they don't know who's behind that wheel because they can't run the plates and figure out who that person is. The windows are really tinted uh, in an well, illegal way, so they may not have a great sense also. Are they armed? Are there multiple people in there? And all of that could be impacting uh, the decision that they make to stay back a little bit and give themselves a little bit of protection from this person. I mean, they got to be thinking, Marla, at this, por at this point, that time is on their side right uh -huh. i mean when it comes to how how much longer can this car go yes but it, they, they certainly should have and should be rick also um running that plate because the owner may know something about right. the suspect yeah it's it's possible because we find out sometimes after the fact that the suspect was in contact via a cell phone some sort of communication device with officers or somebody knows that's watching what's happening with that individual and has a connection with that individual and has relayed that to somebody at a dispatch center, which goes to the officers. They're tracking this from the air. We saw the LA County helicopter, uh, uh, law enforcement helicopter flying up ahead and then the units on the ground there now in a very windy residential area here of uh, the San Gabriel Valley. And the, uh, the sun is uh, setting as well. I'm not sure how that will impact the drive going forward as well, make this even more challenging for this driver. Uh, but uh, you, you've got these steep inclines as well in this, in this neighborhood. And, and we do want to caution everybody. It's certainly tempting to come outside your house if this is all happening right through your neighborhood. Uh, it's a really bad idea yeah. um, because we don't know if this person is armed. We don't know if this car is going to spin out at some point because the driver loses control. You're really just putting yourself at risk for, for what? And we can't see anything inside that vehicle. You yeah. can see, Marlon Alex, mm -hmm. it is tinted uh, on the illegal side uh, in that uh, you just can't make out if there's anybody else inside that vehicle. We can't make out the gender of the driver. Uh, but we could see that the rubber now is completely off of the other front wheel there off the passenger side. So now we're down to the rim on both sides of, uh, of this SUV being pursued, started as a stolen vehicle suspect in the East Los Angeles area, made its way on the 10 freeway, off to the east, but then oh, back there's west. There's a construction There's somebody worker. right wow. there. Recording it. Doing exactly That's what we said. said. <laughs> there's yeah. somebody else. Go get them, they're saying, yeah. yeah. All right, so it, it, time is now approaching 6.30. Why don't we reset? Uh, for people that may just be joining our coverage here on the Fox 11 News Special Report, I'm Alex Michelson with Marla Tejas and Rick Dickert. We are looking at uh, a stolen vehicle pursuit. That, uh, that vehicle now driving just on its uh, rims. And, and maybe, Marla, we can show everybody the video as to why it's driving just on its rims. Yeah, so it was earlier, uh, probably about 20 minutes ago, in fact, shortly after we brought this to you live, Boom. this moment happened. This is on the Soto off-ramp, on the shoulder. CHP planned ahead. They threw out that spike strip. Sure enough, the suspect fell right into there, took their bait, and it was moments after this that then finally the results of the spike strip started to show itself and that rim eventually flew off. Yeah, and this is the, the attempt at a pit maneuver. So they hit the vehicle, they make contact, it spins for a few seconds, but doesn't spin all the way. We got that building blocking our view but somehow the driver is able right here, to within keep, seconds is Whoop. able to keep going and then we've got some other video as well of just look at this the the wheel literally flying off that's happened Gone. both the front wheels now and yet the driver continues has been going for another 10 15 minutes without the wheel and continues to drive right now in the San Gabriel Valley in this residential neighborhood uh, There's with, more people out with no clear end Kids. in sight. Yep, getting their okay. their cell phone video, getting their TikTok, uh, and uh, 
and thankfully nothing bad happened to them, but uh, it still is a dangerous situation. Absolutely, and like law enforcement, anybody in this area should assume that whomever is inside the vehicle is armed and dangerous. And we've seen situations, mm -hmm. as you mentioned there, Marla and Alex, where a driver knowing that the vehicle that he's in or she's in is almost disabled, completely disabled, they'll panic, they'll jump out of that vehicle and see a moment and see the mom and her kids in the driveway there, hey, maybe I can hop into another vehicle, yep. carjacking oh, a vehicle yeah. so that they have a new fresh set of tires. That, we have seen that happen mm -hmm. multiple times live on the air. Uh, when it looks like their car is no more, they just try to jump into another one. All right, so it looks like something might be happening here. I saw that. Are they uh, running out of space? Is it cold sack I think that could be a dead end right there. Because okay. look, look at how the uh, homes are, are, are yeah. situated. Yep, okay, now we are in a cul-de-sac situation. Oh, trying oh, to get away. Wow. Oh, now they're done. Look at that. And, and I'll tell you what, that's, that's a deadly weapon. That vehicle's a deadly weapon. So if, if that driver, if that suspect tries to make contact with officers with their vehicle, that is a use of deadly force by the suspect. Guns drawn. Guns drawn. Whoa. And let's see what happens. Let's see if they choose it. They're not going anywhere. That vehicle's not going anywhere. Uh, the only thing that this suspect can do is try to bail on foot through that neighborhood. Or try to b go in reverse, right? Uh, yeah, they, we've seen that. Possibility. When we've thought that it was around. all over. But will they shoot if they shoot at it? They gotta, yeah, they got to completely block that uh, intersection off. And the longer this goes, the more dangerous the situation goes, a standoff situation. They got to seal that area. They got to set up that perimeter. We talk about perimeters with wildfires. How about a perimeter with a scene like this? They got to make sure everybody's out of harm's way, not in the crossfire if there are shots fired. Looking into the windshield now, getting a slight glimpse. Looks like there's some damage uh, in, on the front windshield, perhaps a little bit there as well, maybe. Still hard. Slight glimpse. Looks like there's some damage uh, in, on the front windshield, perhaps a little bit there as well. Maybe. Still hard to make out activity inside. And we, we also don't know if there's anybody in that passenger seat. And if so, uh, could they have been impacted by that, mm. that you know, collision with the police vehicle? Oh, there? Okay, just, now, oh, now, oh, now we're, that. Now we're getting we're, aggressive. They are being very aggressive here. Whoa. So you also wonder what they know about who's inside. Yeah, and, and, they, and they mean business right here. They want to bring this to an end. They want to bring that suspect into custody. They've already endangered a number of people uh, on the road, walking Are they pedestrians. they shooting at it? I, I, I can't tell if... Whoa! You know, no. He's trying to go in Whoa, reverse. Whoa, he's trying to go reverse. Yeah. Look at that. We've seen that before. So, so now, oh my. officers yeah. have to make a decision how they're going to handle this. They tried to break that wow. passenger window. Look at the smoke. Now the visibility's down. It's even more chaotic, the situation. Whoa. Those officers. So more officers. And there's some, there's some residents out there recording it all. A lot of people in the neighborhood coming out. This wow. is a residential area in the San Gabriel Valley. The address here on this cul-de-sac is Sombrero Drive and Avian Drive. This is all thanks to our extreme nav. This is Monterey Park, where this pursuit has and seemingly come to an end. He wow. in this cul -de -sac. gunning, it, gunning yep. it in reverse right now. Wow, that is something else there. So clearly the suspect is not doing what they've been told by officers. Clearly still trying to get away. Clearly still trying to evade uh, officers. California Highway Patrol is still the lead on this. You can see all the, those three SUVs there. Uh, but now a local jurisdiction involved. We know the L.A. County Sheriff's Department is involved in that they had a, uh, an airship up over this pursuit for a time. Well, and, and what they could do is bring in those big SWAT Bearcat sort of vehicles, yep. which we often see in a standoff, and box in the vehicle even more. Uh, those things can sustain a hit from a vehicle like that. That, it, that, that process uh, can take hours of waiting somebody out. Um, but, but clearly this driver is agitated. It is interesting though, Rick, uh, how aggressive the CHP was in there breaking the window, basically coming to the conclusion that this thing is over, we're, we're done with this. A canine um, unit is a possibility. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a radar on that window? Uh, uh, we're seeing a glare too, so yeah. it's really hard it's to a make a bit out. of a reflection yeah, there. Yeah, the reflection. Uh, in, in recent years, we've seen drones be used to keep officers out of harm's way. They deploy a drone and 
put that drone right into the windshield so they can determine, officers can determine exactly what they're dealing with, how many people are in the vehicle, if uh, that individual there does perhaps have some sort of weapon with yeah. he or she. Or dogs. We've seen police yep. canines some mm -hmm. sparks right used there. in this sort of situation, See too, that would run yep, into the vehicle. from the back tires. So it's still gunning it in, re in, in reverse, and it looks like there's some rubber there behind the vehicle, so it's likely that uh, the tires in the back have now been... Uh, dismantled quite a bit as well. But that vehicle, that SUV, that suspect is now going to be tried with the use of a deadly force in terms of using that vehicle. When you ram a police car, you ram a CHP unit and try to get away like that, you're putting those officers in danger. So that's going to be uh, something that this individual will be written up for yeah. as well, in addition to just the evading police yeah. and the reckless driving and, and all the other uh, counts that uh, they're facing. So now the officers are taking the posture where they're further back, it looks like, uh, just because this suspect inside is not planning to give up and still trying to get away, if you can believe it. And so, Rick, they have these officers back. It looks like the other one in 216 is going into the unit. Obviously, they're strategizing as to what needs to be done. It looks like he just got a shotgun. Look Whoa, at him running onto the pro property. Yeah, they're, I, wow. they're, they're trying to position themselves in such a way now where they're trying to get that perimeter. Oh, oh my goodness. As I told you, uh, they mean business, and they know that this person is very unstable and couldn't be, right. have and, a weapon. And, and I, I would bet a significant amount of money that that driver... Uh, it's not that person's first interaction with law enforcement uh, based off of the way that they are acting now. And, and it's also... And you, or you is think, wanted for a very serious crime the way beyond that, the stolen vehicle. Exactly. That they, that they know something about who this driver is and know that this person is pretty dangerous based off of that sort of posture that we're and, seeing at And this it becomes point. a waiting game. The longer we go here, it's going to become a waiting game. The longer that the suspect chooses not to give themselves up, then they start to think, all right, what's our next opportunity here? Are they making contact in any way with this individual via a cell phone? Does anybody know who's inside that vehicle that has contacted the officers, as I mentioned earlier? It looks like uh, other units have arrived on scene from different agencies, including the L.A. County. They have units on the ground as well, local police. They're clearing the scene. You guys got to yeah. get out of here. They're yeah, setting up that dangerous. perimeter, that yeah. safety line, a circle around this vehicle here so that however this goes, they're going to be able to apprehend that uh, individual. The time is on the officer's side. They may have to bring yeah. in the Bearcat, as you mentioned, Alex and Marley. You, they may have to bring in a crisis negotiator yep. to try to get this individual to surrender. And unclear again, everybody at home, we don't know the gender of the suspect. We don't know much about he or she at all. We don't know if there's anybody else inside that vehicle. All of those questions have not been answered. So some of the, the different techniques that we've seen in the past in this sort of situation, one being the Bearcat, another uh, being um, smoke Canine. bombs, right, that can somebody be put into the, into the vehicle to make it so uncomfortable for the person that they come out. Uh, we have seen police canines uh, jump into a vehicle and essentially bite the, the driver to the point that they are so uncomfortable that they come out. Uh, we have seen shots fired into the vehicle yeah. in the past as well if they if officers feel like they and, are and themselves and guys, we've seen non-lethal rounds fired into vehicles we've seen less you know lethal rounds fired into that. vehicles the, as well the tires that still tire? going wow. still trying to reverse and and what we saw there when the shot was a bit wider was there was a couple of residents in the immediate backyard of where this pursuit came to an end trying to get their phone up either through or up above the fence so they could record all this as it goes down but little do they know because they're below the top of the fence level that there's an officer in front of them with a high-powered weapon that's pointing their way as well and, and again if you live anywhere near this situation or any situation that uh, begins to come to a conclusion like this where you see officers with guns drawn listen to them do what you're told Put yourself and family in a safe spot there so that you don't become a, a victim of what could go down. Look at this. The, the grind. Mean, what is this person thinking at this point? Yeah, well, they're not. They're yeah, not. You know, over, and they overwhelmed. Just not, they're, they're panicking. Uh, yeah. Maybe a third striker. You know, we mentioned we, don't, we have no idea the uh, background, uh, the criminal history of this individual. But the bottom line is, is he's, he's locked in there. The suspect or she locked in there.
Uh, that vehicle is not going to go anywhere. Officers have set up that perimeter. More units have arrived on scene. They're watching this from the air. Even if the, the individual decides to, to run, there's going to be enough resources on the ground there. I'm sure they have called in that canine unit mm -hmm. uh, because because uh, the dog will go right after the suspect too if they choose uh, to to run. But look at that, just gunning it in reverse there still no more rubber on that tire either yeah and you wonder if this driver is under the influence of something um i mean the way that they drove they had a tremendous amount of focus to be able to drive this vehicle as long and as well as they did uh, but you you wonder as well if there's something going on in their mind that may be impairing uh, their judgment process at this point as well and their decision not to give up all right, well, we do want to show you, uh, if you happen to miss it, when this all came to an end in this cul-de-sac, when the driver got into the cul-de-sac, dead end, of course, and the officer's gun drawn initially, and then the baton came out from this officer. That deputy right there with the gun drawn who broke the window and then the, the passenger vehicle. side, cool. right, wow. being smoked out, but now that, that particular deputy got back into one of those units, grabbed a long gun, and is now set up like a sniper across the way in that adjacent driveway. So that was a telling moment as well. Uh, as we look live at the scene now, uh, I, I'm thinking about if I'm the owner of that black truck there and how concerned that person must be because how unstable this whole situation yeah. is right there Not good for your truck no that's for sure no yeah, uh, the it, wheels have stopped the wheels have stopped for a moment now that officer who was set up in that sniper area is right there in the bottom left of your screen um so no longer in the bushes you see that with the gun drawn mm. and, and it's unlikely as we saw this come to the pursuit uh, end of this incident. Uh, the incident is far from over. It's not code four. It's not all clear. But the vehicular side, at least from what we're seeing, is likely over, with the exception of that suspect remaining inside the vehicle. But that vehicle, it, it would be a, a miracle if it was able to get out of this situation and navigate itself through those uh, two CHP units and all those that are there. It's unlikely, though, Alex and Marla, that the driver knew this neighborhood very well. Otherwise, because it pulled into this residential area, Area, was trying to navigate to their way around this area and then came across this, a dead end, a cul-de-sac. That's where the vehicular component to this pursuit came to this standstill, this standoff. And there is that officer right, right there. Mm -hmm. uh, the gun ready. The wheel has, has stopped, it looks like. Yep. Yeah. That back wheel has stopped. So perhaps they've taken the uh, foot off the pedal there. Okay. Uh, here comes another officer to help. And we'll see, uh, we'll see, there's, there's officers just all over, um, taking cover, cir circling the area, and, uh, and... And oftentimes we will take our cues based off of the body language of the officers on the ground, and the body language of the serious. officers on the ground right now is tense. It is. There's no question about it. And they are giving verbal commands at this point. They did make contact, the one officer made contact with that, uh, that passenger side back window was able to break through that so I would think that there is uh, is enough uh, of uh, opportunity that the individual inside that vehicle can hear the officer's commands at this point plus they have the bullhorns and everything else that they can communicate uh, this with the suspect at this time LA County Sheriff's Department involved in this local municipalities of course the California Highway Patrol they were the lead as this pursuit went on the freeway for a time the 10 freeway and, and there's the other units there, and this is, a, this is a, a, a nice residential area of the San Gabriel Valley in Monterey Park here. But this uh, is a standoff now. And sometimes these standoffs, as we've seen Alex and Marla go on for hours. hours. Well yeah. into the night. We've dealt with that. So this is Sombrero Drive and Avian Drive, as Rick just pointed out. This is Monterey Park, where this officially came to an end about maybe 15 minutes ago. We started at the top of the hour picking up the pursuit. That was in initially East L.A. Rick mentioned the freeway routes and now on to surface streets and then winding his or her way into the uh, this residential area of Monterey Park. Yep. And you're seeing the shields come out now. Yep. So they may be, be making a move here. And it, it, it depends what agency and what they're dealing with in how we see these incidents when it is a standoff come oh. to an end. We see, we see some agencies... Just go full force right away. We're going to end this. We're going inside that vehicle. Here we go. Here we go. Approaching Here the driver's go. side. 
Whoa! Are they, are they shooting out the window in the back? Let's see what let's see what they decide to do. Whoa! Uh, here okay. comes another. Here comes oh another baton. Oh, to the break. front! Wow! And they gave the and they gave this suspect plenty of opportunities to wow. get himself up. And no canine. Get out of the vehicle. Does this? And they're gonna they're gonna because they have to assume out. that this person is armed. This this strategy. Here, he here we door go. Open the door. And they're going to pull this guy out. This is over. Sorry. We gave you plenty of opportunities to give yourself up peacefully. And uh, there's, there's officers surrounding the situation. And they're, they're, they're oh, this lugging This person's still not wow. going. Now, now they're... Wow. Yeah, they are uh, obviously evading, um, trying to prevent being taken into custody here. Uh, it looked to be a male. And again, unclear Six if it's just one. the driver. Six deputies. One suspect, it seems. It doesn't. It doesn't appear like there's anybody else in that vehicle, based we're, off of the way that getting, they're uh, acting. We're going to get. We're trying to get our helicopter around, uh, and now opening up the back. It appears that the suspect, yeah, is is struggling yeah. with the officers, uh, just outside the driver's door there. And, and now the officers are in the back though, because they have not cleared that vehicle of any any other individuals. Now that back hatch is open. Uh, and now these officers, body language, body language, standing down, and it appears that they, oh, have, uh, they have detained this suspect here. And once we, we see those four fingers... We still haven't gotten a good shot of the suspect yeah. yet. On yeah, the ground, uh, on the ground, the suspect was, at least that's what we saw, or, or is that... The, it, I, I can't tell if that... Uh, yeah, they've the already suspect? brought the suspect over towards the vehicle right there. And they're leaning up against the hood of that. It looks like that. Yeah, there's oh, a suspect yeah, right I there. Oh yeah, I see. Okay, That's with the print right on there, the, the shirt, on the black T-shirt yeah, with white print with the on it. On it. Yeah, yeah, with the uh, logo of some sort on it. And now they're uh, making sure that vehicle's cleared. They code for it. They make sure that that suspect is cuffed in a squad car and off to jail on their Friday night. Well, um, thankfully, nobody was hit during all of that and a successful conclusion to a, a long and dangerous and memorable pursuit here on the Fox 11 News special report. Uh, for the first time this hour at 6.48, we're going to take a commercial break. <laughs> we're going to reset. Male okay, there's that. our look. There's yeah. the suspect. Like a younger, Let's class. take younger. a look at him real quick. Uh, yeah. Looks to be a, almost like a juvenile. Yeah, yeah, a, a yeah. younger man there for sure. Mm -hmm.